Hello and welcome to another video here on Cruising Coasters. I'm Jeff and today we are at the Australia Zoo, home of the Crocodile Hunter, just outside of Brisbane, Australia. This morning we took a flight from Sydney to Brisbane, drove a car up to the Australia Zoo, and I actually cannot believe we're here. I have been a massive Irwin family uh, fan for years and years, and if like 10 year old me knew that I'd be coming here one day, uh, I, I probably wouldn't believe it. I am so excited to, to be here. Uh, we're gonna check out everything that the zoo has to offer, and we do have a koala encounter that I'm going to bring you along to as well. And a massive shout out to the Australia Zoo for allowing us to film uh, some portions that typically you wouldn't be able to film. I'm excited to take you guys along to the journey and show you around the zoo. We've uh, just walked into the park and I can already tell you just how absolutely beautiful it is and uh, just how like how much care they take care of the landscaping and everything is absolutely stunning. He's uh, very hungry this morning. Same. What's funny is they have these other like uh, like lizard things that I think are just like Australian animals that have kind of like mooching off of uh, some of the exhibit. Either that or he's about to escape. Feeling like we're right back home in Florida with the uh, American alligator exhibit. He's a big boy. Wonder if he has any uh, friends in here. Found the uh, second alligator here. Another big boy or big girl. Girl. Girl? <laughs> she just held us. She's 60. 60. 60. Good for her. She looks great for her age. She's killing it. This is one of the uh, turtle exhibits and like I just can't get over how beautiful everything here is and just how well maintained things are and the turtle he is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the camera, I'm trying to zoom in a bit. He's under the, uh, the log there relaxing. But man, this zoo is absolutely incredible so far. We're gonna touch a, a live snake. It's very interesting feeling. Yeah. Like very like rubbery yeah. almost. So his scars are made of the same thing as your fingernails, keratin. Ah, yeah. So. Interesting. I think we found a wombat. He's just above there. He's so cute. And he has like such a huge like like look at this. It's massive this like area that he has. It's yeah, it's beautiful. I'm gonna just say that over and over again today because it's absolutely incredible. I found one that is much closer to us and he's uh playing in the sand. Probably digging a he's, yeah, he's probably too warm. It's very warm today. <laughs> he's so cute. The same Found this little guy. Not really sure what he is, but he's pretty cute. He's so cute. Oh, scratch your nose. We have made it into the bird garden, which is like an aviary. Not like an aviary. I think it just is an aviary, but it's called the bird garden. And I hear a lot of bird sounds. Oh. There's birds flying everywhere. <laughs> How fun is that? Woof! They literally just are flying everywhere. The next section that we're heading into is the kangaroo and wallaby exhibit. They call it the Haven. And it looks like they're free roaming as well, which Bush Gardens Tampa used to be similar. Now they have like gates and like posts so that you can't actually go right up to them. But this looks like they're gonna be right out in the open, which I'm excited about. So let's go see some kangaroo. To see like some scale of the exhibit is absolutely massive of where all of the kangaroo could be. And they have this whole whole area. It does not look like maybe they're not out quite yet. We are in quite early, but man, this is absolutely massive. Looks like maybe they're preparing for them to come out soon. Looks like we did find the kangaroo, so they are out. They just have so much space that it can be <laughs> really difficult to find them, and it looks like they're all just kind of relaxing in this area over here, so we're gonna go, I guess, pet some kangaroo. We found our a, a friend, a kangaroo friend. Oh my gosh, they're they're so soft. 
Oh my gosh, they're so cute. I love them. And what I love is they have a little rest area. So if the kangaroo don't want to be pet, they know to come into this little area. There's a couple of these in the little sanctuary that they have. And they just come in here and they know they get some alone time and they don't have to be pet or be bothered, which I think that's really nice. It shows how like thoughtful they're being about the animals. Look at him go, look at him go. <laughs> he's got the zoomies. Oh, he said he's over people. <laughs> he went to the rest area. We uh, spotted our first koala in the tree. If you can make him out, there's a couple. There's another one eating in this tree here. They're very sleepy. Found a uh, good look of one of the koalas munching away. Oh my gosh, she's literally so cute. We found a cute little koala. Look at how cute she is. She's literally adorable. They're so soft. So cute. Up next is the uh, Southeast Asia section. It's a, again, the theming just continues to impress me so much. Like I would never expect this from a zoo. This is the uh, entrance to the Tiger Temple, but I think we spotted uh, the Red Panda exhibit, which is one of our favorites. Way up in the tree. I'm not sure if you can see him. I'll try to put like an arrow on the screen or use my finger, but it's way up there. Another beautiful exhibit though for the, uh, the Red Pandas. And I think it's time for the Tiger Temple. That was so neat. We just happened to be walking by the uh, Tiger Temple again while the uh, 11 o'clock demonstration was on and they put a bunch of like different meat throughout the exhibit to get him to uh, go out and scavenge kind of like he would in the wild. So uh, some footage there of that happening, but that was really neat. I'm really glad that we happened to be walking by at that time. Made it to the Africa section and we found of course some giraffes, some zebra are in here. And again, just blown away by the quality of the Wow, we were talking about like just how this doesn't even feel like a zoo. Like it feels like a true like sanctuary for the animals. Like, everything is beautiful and thoughtful, well designed. They have so much room and just like space to walk around and run just like they would in the wild. And I'm just, I'm blown away from the quality of the zoo. Like I, I had high expectations, but like I would say I'm these expectations, like the reality like far exceeds them. We think we may have just seen the world's tallest living giraffe. His name is Forrest. We think this may be him. He is a very, very tall giraffe. And I think these must be white rhino. If you didn't know, they got their name the white rhino from a mistranslation from a Afrikaans word named vite, which means wide and that is for like the wide part of their mouth. And your other fun fact is I used to be a Kilimanjaro Safaris driver at Disney's Animal Kingdom, which is why I know all these random facts from African animals. So you're welcome in advance. Cheetah is in the, uh, the shade over there, trying to get away from the heat. It's around uh, like 85, 90 out today and very sunny. So I don't blame them for uh, wanting to cool off a bit. But again, I'm gonna keep saying it. This exhibit is just absolutely incredible. It's beautiful. 
You are not as fast as a cheetah. Not even close. This is fun, they have a little like lights here. Let me see if I can find the lights on the ground. And you race the lights to see if you can be as fast as a cheetah. Just hysterical. Huh? You're gonna get closer. You're a pretty bird. Hello. <laughs> what are you I, we're, doing? we're looking oh at you. God. How are you doing? Hello. We decided it was time for a bit of lunch and refresh a little bit because, oh my gosh, is it hot and it's taking a lot out of us. I have gone with the chicken bacon sandwich, which looks really tasty. We got a box of french fries to share. And then Joshy went with this really good, uh, like a shredded beef wrap, which looks really good. Yum. And one thing that I absolutely love so far about Australia is they have vanilla Coke on tap everywhere. I'm not really a big soda drinker, but I love me some vanilla Coke. And can you beat a view of the crocodile during lunch? Like this is our view. I love it. Australia Zoo food review time. My sandwich was really tasty and really fresh tasting too. Um, the french fries were perfectly cooked and crispy, exactly how you want them, hot and fresh. Um, and the vanilla Coke was vanilla Coke, it was delicious. Um, and altogether we paid $28 for our meal, which I don't think is that bad, and that is converted to US dollars. Um, so yeah, I think a really good value for what we got, and like I said, a really fresh, hot tasting meal. I think a very good value. And since it is so hot out, we got a little sweet treat, and someone told us we had to try the Golden Gay Time ice cream bar while we were here in Australia, so why not? That's what she looks like. I'm a big fan of the Golden Gate Time, just gonna say. It's very like toffee, butter pecan tasting with the crumbs on the outside, vanilla ice cream on the inside. I give it a 10 out of 10. I'm here for the Golden Gate Time. And then when she starts flying, stay nice and still. What do you reckon, Lil? Can you see that note up there? And hopefully she'll know exactly where to fly to. Or not. Oh, well, in two seconds, we're gonna do a little reset. Can you do a little bit more up and down movement? Can you see it? Yeah? Can you get that note for me? Oh, let's see how she goes. Now just let her play with it. She's very curious. Ha-ha! Woo! Lily Lou! Lily! Are you gonna help? Oh, she's going to the toilet. I am so sorry. Oh, that, that's good luck, I swear. Um, I apologize. Lily, you had a little toilet break. That was so embarrassing. Is hopefully all of you guys are going to leave the zoo today with a bit more of an appreciation and understanding of just what an amazing animal crocodiles really are. Hopefully we'll change your mind about them. Unfortunately, a lot of people think that all crocs do is they just swim around and they just kill and eat people every day of the week just for the fun of it. This couldn't be further from the truth. The best thing about crocodiles, and it doesn't matter if it's here at the zoo or in Northern Australia, they're easy to avoid. All you gotta do is follow some basic rules. The biggest rule that people seem to break all the time is this, is going down into the water. Now I've got an advantage I can see. In. They normally live in dirty water. Boys like Scrapper as well, they're really territorial. So you see how interested he got as soon as I realized I was in there, they've never been annoyed by it, so everything. Now that I've annoyed him, here you go, mate. Good luck. Thanks very much. Come on, Scrapper. Come on, big fella. You get a bit of a hit out of Scrapper now. Let's see what he's gonna do. Come on, big fella. Come on. Oh, there we go. Now that was a pretty good strike by Scrapper. That was from the tip of his nose to the base of the tail, and they can do that at the blink of an eye. Generally, they'll strike for one of two reasons. One is food, as you've just seen, and the second is territory. You saw how quickly Scrapper turned there as soon as he saw Toby getting back in his water. I'll try and feed him over this side. Now, one of the important things, I said it quickly at the start, to remember here is we've got this crystal clear water. Normally, you wouldn't find them, particularly a reasonable size male like Scrapper in clear water because they use the camouflage of the, of the clear water to hunt prey. They wait for animals to come down to get a drink. He can actually feel my footsteps. So even in places where the water is so dirty they can't see, 
he can still tell where an animal is coming down to get a drink by its footsteps. He's got little black dots all over his face, and these actually pick up these footsteps. They're called integumentary sense organs. So he can stay beneath the water, he can wait for an animal to get real close, and then he'll strike out just like he did. He'll grab a hold of the animal between his jaws, and you can see, boy, you can see his teeth there, look at the size of those teeth in his mouth. He'll just slam his jaws on the animal and then pull it back down into the water. And that's how he gets his food. Once he pulls it into the water, he can hold his breath for over seven hours. So he's got all the time in the world. He's also got something else he can do to grab himself his food, and Bruce is gonna show us that. All right, so you've seen the strike from the water's edge. That's the main technique that crocodiles use to catch themselves a feed. But they can also do what we call a tail walk, and that's where they launch themselves vertically up out of the water to grab a prey item out of a, a tree or an overhanging branch. And they do this from the day they first hatch out of the egg, when they're only about 15 or 16 centimeters long, when everything out in the river feeds upon them. Sorry, Scrapper. He missed that, Toby. Can you grab that for me? Yeah, yeah, sure, mate. Sure. But like I said, when they're small, they get eaten by just about everything out in the river. So they'll hang out in the mangroves and the reeds at the side of the river, and they'll use this method to pick off grasshoppers and bugs, little frogs and things. And they'll continue to use it right up until they're scrapper size and even bigger when they're taking things like flying foxes or snakes, or even silly zookeepers hanging out over the water. Get one more crack at it, Scrapper. Come on. Back out here, buddy. Head into the deep water. Some of our bigger crocodiles have even been able to get their head up and over the top of this rail, so you definitely don't want to hang out over the water in Northern Australia. We have just finished the Wildlife Warriors show that you guys saw some footage of there. Really spectacular view of the crocodiles and you will never catch me entering the water voluntarily to talk or to, to work with a crocodile. That was a little obscene but it was really, really cool to see them up close in that way. Um, the show was about 45 minutes long and the crocodile part was like the last like five to 10 minutes. So um, just kind of know and be prepared that you will likely see a lot of like kind of fluffy games, birds, etc. before that. But it was really nice to have a sit and chill out and see the show that was really, really entertaining. Um, we are in line now for our koala encounter. So we have a private koala encounter at 2 p.m. Um, and we just were put under a severe thunderstorm warning. So. Uh, a lot of chaotic things happening right now, but we should be taking you in to go see our koala encounter now. Yes, we're reacquainted. Yeah, feel free to move around now and get the trees to oh, stay perfect. still. Um, but yeah, feel free to get close if you wish. Though. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are at the koala encounter here at the Australia Zoo, where they've been kind enough to allow us to film some of this. So this is Susan, the four-year-old koala that we are spending some very koality time with. Do you see what I did there? And she's a sweetheart. Oh, it's going right for the neck. <laughs> she's a very curious thing. But there um, a lot, like the fur is a lot thicker than you think that it would be. Like it's like very dense very thick. fur. They have three yeah. layers of fluff. Three layers of fluff. Basically a built-in raincoat. Yeah. So they don't mind the rain whatsoever. They'll sit out there. <laughs> and we learned that their hearing is excellent. They can yeah. hear up to two kilometers away, which yeah. is insane. Then they can smell up to one kilometer away, um, but their eyesight is not very good. They can only Same. see two meters. Two meters. Two meters. Uh, very poor eyesight. Um, yeah, so all the hearing and smell make up for it. For yeah. sure. What are we looking at? Very, like, calm. Like, I mean, like, I know that they are, they look like they're calm, but, like, she's yeah, literally so no. chill. Yeah, so they'll just, like, hang out here. that, like, to um, but Susan, Susan does like it. And like the dense fur, is that a way to keep them cooler? Cooler, um, or hot, warmer, uh, warmer in the well colder during months? Our wow. um, yeah. <laughs> during um, summer, they'll either hug a really big tree, they can feel the water going up and down the trunk of the tree, they'll find a really shady tree, or they'll do a supman where they lie out with all their arms and legs dangling, and all the wind will help cool them down that way. But the lightness of her fur also reflects the sun. So uh, Susan here is a northern koala, only found in Queensland. So 
So the maximum they can get up to is 9 kilos. So she's quite light. She only weighs around 4.5 kilos. So very light. Um, then we've got our southern koalas. They're found in New South Wales, Victoria. They can get up to 16 kilos. So oh imagine gosh. triple her size. Triple yeah. um, very dark brown in colour and very fluffy. Um, their head's nearly the size of our head. Like, they're ginormous That's down huge. there. Kiana, the zookeeper, was telling us that the wildfires that devastated Australia a few years ago really did a number on the koala population and there are less than 600,000 koalas left in the wild which is really that's really sad that's we are uh, we're just finding out the life cycle of a koala which is very interesting they are born after 35 days of development which is crazy they come out and then they crawl into the pouch and they just know what to do with no help from mom and uh they stay in there for about six months when they'll start growing more fur and they come out and they go in and out of the pouch for like the first year and then they will eventually uh, leave and do their own thing. But yeah, they'll uh, drink milk out of the uh, pouch until about six months of age. <laughs> We have just finished the uh, koala encounter, which was absolutely amazing. I am so grateful for the team for letting us film and show you guys a little bit about that experience. Um, we did book it separately, so we did pay for it. Um, and you can book it separately as well. It was around, I wanna say 125 Australian dollars per person to do that. And it was about a 30 minute experience. And what I found really interesting is there are actually some very strict laws about koala cuddling, that they are only allowed to do it for 30 minutes per day and they can only work up to three days in a row before they need a rest day. So they have some serious labor laws for their uh, koalas. And uh, don't blame them, that was an intense session. It seems like the cruising coasters curse is living on because oh my gosh, we are like living through an actual monsoon right now. The water levels are rising, <laughs> oh no. We have escaped our safety zone, still a light drizzle, um, and we have left the park. We saw most of what we wanted to see today. It was an absolute amazing day, but the fun's not over. Our ticket, we actually paid two Australian dollars more to get a sneak peek at their hospital, which we're on our way to now. So it's actually outside of the park, and we're gonna go take a quick wander over to the hospital section and see what they have going on over there. So this is where they would be doing different uh, procedures and operations. Nothing really going on right now, but just showing you guys what there is. I found a little uh, koala here, must be recovering. Oh no, someone is in for a broken thumb. And here they're doing a some type of procedure on a bird. It's actually really interesting to get to see. And then this one looks like they have some type of like rodent that they're working on. A very small, small animal over there. Maybe a meerkat? You can see them on the TV. Very interesting. They also have a, uh, a video up here of what they're currently doing. You can see them doing the procedure. Well, that is gonna just about do it for our visit here at the Australia Zoo. And I'll tell you what, we had an absolutely incredible action-packed day, seeing so many animals, uh, getting the koala experience, which was beyond incredible, uh, going through the monsoon, which was a little crazy, but also it just added to like the fun and chaos of the day. I had some really high expectations wanting to come here for many, many years. And let me tell you, my visit today far exceeded any expectations that I had, and I had an absolute amazing time. Um, can't recommend coming here and visiting enough if you're ever in, in the area. If you ever come to Australia for a coaster trip, uh, it's not that far from the Gold Coast. Um, from the Brisbane airport, it was about a 45 minute drive north, so totally, totally recommend. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you're still staying tuned to this, I greatly appreciate it. Make sure you guys uh, hit the like button, fight the YouTube algorithm, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Tons of cruise and coaster content coming up on this trip, and I greatly appreciate every guys uh, who take the time to subscribe. Keep cruising and coasting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!